welcome to Forensic Detective Design, I'm Dr. Kaz, and today we are presenting our hydrogen sulfide meter, folks, from 0 to 100 parts per million. Dr. Kaz, what's new about this thing? It has a three-year life of the sensor, a two-year life of the battery, folks. It has LED buzzer, vibration alarms, has a beautiful stainless steel belt clip, rubberized housing that passes the 20-foot drop test, and it's also waterproof, folks. So, don't forget, NIST traceable calibration to assure you of 100% accuracy performed here our own hands Los Angeles have a great day straight to the unboxing look folks you have your product make sure the detector you purchase in this case hydrogen sulfide is ticked make sure it is ticked go ahead grab your knife folks slide it down the side pop it open open that guy it's a strong box there and here we have our detector we'll leave that on the side here's our calibration cap we're going to talk about this in a moment here is the wristband folks the wristband you may want to pop that on you can do so in the box we have our calibration certificate make sure it's signed and make sure it's nist stamped folks what is good if the detector is not calibrated you might as well kick it off the cliff the most important thing when it comes to gas detection is calibration. Very, very important, folks. Here's the manual. It's always here. If you lose it, check the website. And if you've lost your bearings, email us, folks. We have it all. Not a problem. We're not running away. And at the last item in the box are some friendly reminders from Dr. Carl's charge the battery, bump test, calibrate. And we love your feedback, folks. So feel free to reach out at any point in time. Let's pop that on the side and take out the detector. First thing we do when we pop it out is we're going to turn it on real quick, okay? As you can see, power button. Just press that. And as you can see, back lights on. It vibrated and it buzzed to tell us, hello, I am alive. It shows you the preset levels. Level 12, low alarm 12. 12 ppm of hydrogen sulfide. High alarm is 50 parts per million of hydrogen sulfide. Now it's going to go down from a 60 second countdown. As that's happening, let's go through the detector, folks. This is the unit on all angles. Check it out, folks. Okay, now another check you're going to do is you're going to make sure it's actually a hydrogen sulfide detector. You're going to make sure the serial number matches that of your calibration certificate. Make sure the basics are all correct. Look, mistakes happen, folks. Or you may grab this from someone else and they say it's carbon monoxide but it's hydrogen sulfide or the other way around you want to make sure you're doing things correctly safety is priority folks now look hex screws hold the detector together okay it can be undone so you could change the battery inside is a 9 volt lithium battery make sure you replace it with a 9 volt lithium battery folks it will last two years this is the alligator stainless steel belt clip you could take that off or pop it on with the phillips cross screwdriver you see that folks there's a screw that holds down the alligator clip some people want it on some people don't okie dokie and let's go back on the front here folks now that's counted down and as you could see it's displaying zero parts per million and we could see the battery indicator there folks that's the standard display that was the power button that I already used. You saw that. And if you want the backlight to momentarily come on, just press it. You could be in a dark spot. This is a great little feature. Okay, and it comes off again. The backlight turns off. You want it on? Just press it again. Bang. So let's go through the front features here, folks. Now we have the orifice. This is where the sensor resides. Air flows in, diffuses through the membrane, and it's detected by the sensor. So whatever it's being displayed is the instantaneous level of hydrogen sulfide in the adjacent vicinity volume of space, which is right over here. This is our menu select button. So there's two buttons on the front, and you're going to always be using the two. Okay, the display, the power button, as we've discussed. And here is the buzzer orifice, folks. That's where you hear the sound, the buzzer coming through. On the periphery here, see that black little line? That's actually an LED display. So when it's on and flashing, you will see the red LEDs flash, folks. And that's basically it. That is how the detector sort of physically functions. Okay, now let's get straight to the detector software and how it displays if you keep pressing 
the power button. We know that it's the backlight. We've talked about that. If you press momentarily the menu button, you go through this sequence of displays. What is this, Dr. Cos? What's S? Well, S is short-term exposure, 15-minute time-weighted average. T means eight-hour time-weighted average. And then you get into your time. That's the time, folks. You want to change it? Just hold down the menu button and you could start changing it. You change the digits with the power button. You press enter. And if you want to get out and you're done, you press enter for two seconds. Anytime you press enter for two seconds, that is how you tell the detector, lock that in. Okay. And it goes back to the instantaneous display mode. That's basically, folks, that's the way it works. That's the basic functionality. Now, if you want to get into the more advanced functions, such as zero calibrate, span calibrate, and changing the alarm thresholds, this is what we do. We hold down the menu button. We're telling it we want to get into the menu options. It says, what's the password? Well, the password's one, two, three, four. Let's pop it in. One. Press menu to select through. Two. <clears throat> and power button, change the digits. Three. Four. That's the password of these um, that we use for these detectors. Now, that's locked in. What did we say? Hold down the menu button for two seconds. That's how you tell it. Bang. Now it's telling you L means that's the preset low-level alarm. Press menu to scroll through. That's the high-level alarm. Press menu to scroll through again. Z, it tells you, do you want to zero calibrate? Or C, do you want to span calibrate? C stands for calibration, span calibrate. Press it again, it goes back to the low level alarm. Now let's take, God, Dr. Cos, how do we change those low level alarms? Okay, what you do is let's say if instead of 12, I want it to be 10. Hold down, when that's showing, hold down the menu button and it's telling you, oh, I'm ready to be changed. Keep pressing M to change the digit, okay. And instead of 12, let's do 10. Just press power and the power button to scroll through the digits. It's 10. There you go. It's flashing. I'm done editing. Press menu for two seconds to lock it in. Bang. It's done. And now I could, can, I could continue. In the menu options, I could keep scrolling through. Okay. If I don't um, do anything, for example, if I just hold it there for four seconds and I don't do anything with the menu button, the detector knows that nothing's going on. So it's going to go back to the normal display mode, which is here. It's not going to stay there because you may think, oh, someone's going to tamper with it. So it goes back to the locked in instantaneous mode display. I hope that makes sense. Now let's go back and do a zero calibrate. So let's do calibration now. Whenever we calibrate, the first thing you want to do is always zero calibrate, okay? Zero calibrate, especially with toxic gas. So there's the one. Let's put the two. We've been through this. Three and four. We have to do this, folks. There's a reason because we don't want anyone just changing the alarm levels. We don't want anyone just calibrating because it could mess up the functionality of the device. And there's a safety aspect to these folks. Okay. So first thing, as we said, we want to zero calibrate. This typically sometimes it may waver off zero so that's when you really want to zero calibrate one or two well if you want to span calibrate we always must do zero calibrate okay now see because i'm talking i didn't do any action here you went back to the reading mode you see that folks so we have to go back again okay let's do that let's do one two three four okay one two oh gone a bit too much Three, okay, we have to be a little patient here. Four, come on, come on, Dr. Cos, you could be better than that. Four, okay, hold it down, okay, scroll through, go to Z. Now, I want, that could be one or two, as I said, it could be wavering. Hold down the menu button to lock it in. It says, are you double sure? It's flashing, yes, I am sure. Hold it down again, and there you go. After, in a few seconds, it's going to go back. Okay, so I've zero calibrated. Now I want to span calibrate. Hold it down. I want to span calibrate. Dr. Cos has the bottle here and it's 25 ppm. Yes, I do want 25 ppm. It knows that I have 25 ppm because I already put that in before I did this video. And I'm going to enter that value. I'm going to hold down and it knows, okay, it's expecting 25 ppm of hydrogen sulfide. So what do we do? Let's just put down for a minute. Look, we've got the gas bottle. We know it's 25 ppm. We've done our due diligence. We've put the gas regular on with our tubing. 
And we've popped it on the end with the calibration cap that came with the detector, folks. Very important to use the one we have. If not, let us know. It's a clamp style, so clamp it on over the central hole and make sure there's a nice snugly fit there, folks. See that? It's nice and snugly. And there's a hole there that exits. The calibration gas comes in, goes into the central, then exits from that hole. Okay, it's flashing. It's asking, Dr. Cars, what's going on? Is this, uh, I, I want to read some hydrogen sulfide. So turn on the gas, make sure you got about 0.5 liters per minute of gas and hold it there for at least 60 seconds. Okay, we want it to come to stabilize, folks. You could see it increasing. I'll be back in 60 seconds. All right, folks, I'm back. It's reading 24 ppm instead of 25. Hold it down and you're locked in. So instead of 24, it is now reading 25. So I've told it that 24 was actually 25 and now it's reading 25 and it's come out of the menu and it's instantaneously reading. And then in doing so, it's tripped the alarm and it is showing the LED and it's buzzing. Okay, folks, I've taken the gas off. I'm turning off the gas. Now fresh air is coming into the sensor hole, therefore reducing the hydrogen sulfide concentration and that's the way we do it folks that was the unboxing calibration and adjustment of alarms of the fd103 hydrogen sulfide be well folks have a great day bye bye